Hello, good afternoon. It's uh, Deal Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of European markets finished for the Thursday, the 11th of February 2016. Be sure to visit www.cfds.com for your trading needs and certainly qualify for that really generous uh, bonus that's up to 25%. That's uh, currently on offer. Alternatively, visit the educational site www.cfds.education to certainly learn more. Okay, in terms of uh, trading, it's been a tricky uh, last 24 hours. It certainly has been very choppy in terms of the uh, the actual bias changes and European markets just still cannot catch a bounce. It's just uh, very, very bearish for the European markets. Okay, so the uh, Yellen testimony is over. Uh, basically, she has been... Um, bear with me. Okay, so certainly um, all eyes on the BOJ in terms of potential intervention. So the market could certainly short squeeze at any time. So if you are a bear, you need to be very cautious in terms of the um, current bias in this market. Okay, so how can we sum this up? Asian markets overnight butchered once again. Uh, the Asian market certainly under pressure. We had the Hang Seng that was back open again, down almost 700 odd points, down almost 4%. We had a Nikkei down by 370 odd points, minus 2.3%. And that obviously has led to the US market certainly being under pressure and you and the European markets down by 2 to 3, almost, well, especially with reference to the CAC, down almost 4%. So certainly um, obliterated, um, probably the best way to explain it. Okay. Uh, in terms of oil prices, certainly you're under pressure. The uh, crude oil is back at $26. If we bring up the chart of crude, certainly uh, reverberations. Uh, certainly across the board in terms of the uh, uh, understanding of risk aversion as you can see oil prices make a new low and therefore keep the indices under severe severe pressure and obviously given the fact that oil price uh, made a new low the FTSE obviously made a new low as well so the FTSE certainly is in no man's land at the moment we do have this diagonal trend line that certainly is coming in to potentially support it but the weekly chart certainly is looking very messy at this juncture in terms of potential support, I mean, you have 5,200. You have no real support zone. I mean, our solid support zones are down below. These are just um, really, um, I mean, the only real support that we can see on the weekly chart now is at this uh, 5,240. So we are relying on the BOJ to potentially create this bottoming tail and force the FTSE 100 back higher. So again, all eyes on the BOJ. Okay, right. I understand. Okay, so how do we interpret the actual uh, news flow and the uh, market right uh, obviously bias thus far? In terms of news flow, let's try and uh, decipher the news flow, see what exactly uh, is affecting this market. First of all, Miss Yellen. Okay, she certainly seems to be trying a neutral line. The conference, uh, her, her basically Q&A is certainly over. She certainly left the door open in terms of negative rates. So that negative rate put is certainly in for US markets to a large extent, okay? Although she has uh, stated that she's data dependent, okay? And uh, certainly I can't see any justification for a rate cut at present and she is going to keep an open mind going into March, okay? Now, in terms of the uh, European day, unemployment numbers came out out of the Eurozone, slightly higher than expected. Continuous jobless claims certainly came out weaker than expected, thereby helping the dollar somewhat. Although Miss Yellen certainly has um, hit the dollar suit to us to a large extent, given the fact that she's opened the door for, for negative rates. Okay. Other than that, nothing really market moving, other than the fact that, uh, obviously, like I said, we had a, a spike in the USDJPY. I think it was a two to 300 pip move in a matter of minutes. If I bring up the chart of the JPY, USDJPY, USDJPY, here we go, okay. So you can see the spike here from uh, 111, it spiked as high as 113, so 250 point spike. And it's certainly trading sideways thus far. Now, one could say, and one could certainly argue that you are perfectly primed for this inverted head and shoulders formation. You've built your base, you create this right shoulder now, and all eyes on the BOJ. So over to the BOJ now. To, crook, to create some fireworks, okay? So all eyes on the BLJ and the potential for that right shoulder to uh, obviously materialize, okay? Right, in terms of uh, the uh, technical uh, backdrop, let's look at the technical backdrop now. Okay, so Eurostock certainly finished in on the uh, lower side of the spectrum. 
that's not exactly a healthy sign. I that's not something that I'd like to see as a trader. Okay, and even though we did have this pop up to 2725, we basically gave it all up going into the close. So again, certainly concerning. The 60 minute chart failed to, to create that bull flag, and we certainly seem to be making a series of lower lows and lower highs. So from a technical point of view, it's very hard to argue for any real upside. Um, now, obviously, BOJ could certainly change the uh, the whole equation, and we could certainly see a 100-point pop on the euro stocks very, very quickly. Although, the other factor that the uh, the uh, euro stock certainly has to contend with is the move of this euro. Uh, the euro USD obviously hit this pivot low on the uh, 3rd of December, and ever since then, it's been rallying non-stop. Now, we are into this zone, uh, 11370, 11380 on the daily chart of acting as a potential resistance. On the 4-hour chart, we certainly seem to be making higher highs and higher lows. On the 60-minute chart, certainly some signs of uh, exhaustion there. No real, uh, obviously, uh, conviction there with regards to the higher highs. So that certainly needs to be taken into consideration. And on the 10-minute chart, you are seeing a potential here now for, for a H&S formation to play out. You can see the left shoulder here, the head, and obviously looking for a right shoulder, then looking for a move lower. So the USDJPY has an inverted head and shoulders, and the Euro USD has a H&S. So that certainly is very, very interesting, folks. Very interesting. So, okay, anyway, either way, the market will dictate, and the market will tell us which way it wants to go, Okay. Uh, all eyes on the BOJ, any type of intervention, this market is going to fly. Okay, that's basically the summation here at this uh, current juncture. Okay, now in terms of the equities, let's go back over to the equities now that we've seen the, the price of oil, well, the price of gold as well. I mean, if you look at the weekly chart of gold, you are now potentially knocking on that resistance zone, though, although it does have scope to even hit the $1,300 level. But again, uh, certainly remain open-minded. For now, there is potential resistance in this zone here, okay? And you are looking for a potential short-term pullback. Uh, now again, uh, is this pullback going to be something that's uh, short-term or is it something that is brewing for another move higher? And you can certainly see there's a potential there for inverted head and shoulders. So again, let's just see how long this uh, banking crisis lasts. Okay, so the price of copper as well. Uh, this is another chart that's of interest to me, given the fact that uh, we are seem to be do certainly do seem to be basing here, uh, given the fact that Miss Yellen potentially has caught, opened up the kind of worms of negative rate hikes, and a weaker dollar obviously always helps commodities, and this could that may well be the uh, the potential catalyst needed to trigger this uh, this uh, short squeeze uh, that we uh, that everybody is potentially expecting. So. Again, keep an eye on, on that as well. Okay, so that certainly is another uh, potential scenario that could play out in terms of the markets potentially putting in a bottom in copper, gold, and oil. Okay, gold certainly has already started anyway, regardless. That certainly has uh, started. It's really annoying that, given the fact that uh, the Fed really is in a uh, rock and a hard place and can't raise rates anytime soon. Okay, and given the fact that you have negative rates around the world, then really gold is one hell of a, a yielding. Um, uh, instrument okay in, compared to negative rates around the globe and obviously the uncertainty from the banking crisis etc etc in China and so on and so forth okay now in terms of oil let's bring a chart of oil okay so oil again is a concern now whether or not we can potentially bottom out here and start to look to build a base and, and then reverse in the opposite direction that certainly remains open to uh, debate okay for now the 10 minute chart certainly has based at this uh, 26 dollar level and you are looking to project higher now again if the boj intervenes bear this in mind folks if boj intervenes and this then you have a, a substantial rally on your hands okay so all eyes on the boj but can you really trade based on the, the expo based on hope hope that the boj intervenes uh, i think not now again is, is problematic okay so certainly take that into consideration as well okay right let's look at the technical picture now so euro stocks as we already know is in immense trouble Although, having said that, the S&P Europe 350 certainly is into key support or potential support on the weekly chart as well, as you can see. Although we have dipped slightly below, uh, certainly is a, a potential zone of support. And an area, excuse me, and an area where we could certainly short squeeze higher. Again, on the euro stocks of 600, again, this is a zone where we could potentially short squeeze higher. So... Again, these are two zones on the European indices where you are looking for a potential short squeeze. So obviously bear that into uh, consideration, okay? 
Now, the other factor as well with regards to the V stocks. Now, the V stocks on the uh, volatility gauge certainly is immensely, immensely, immensely overbought from my perspective. This certainly is screaming for a pullback, okay, in terms of the uh, uh, the actual fear gauge, okay, and you can see on the RSI as well, you certainly are into uh, potential overbought territory. So it certainly is uh, rallying much higher than expected. That was obviously with the increase in volume too on this occasion. So again, all eyes on the volatility gauge. We certainly have broken out, and that's obviously uh, uh, confirming the uh, the actual uh, sell-off in the European equity. So again, certainly keep an eye out for that as well. Okay, now the CAC uh, volatility index as well. You can see on the daily chart now we are coming into potential resistance for that. It certainly is an uncharted charted territory, it's certainly familiar territory, and therefore I would certainly exercise caution in this region. So I would not like to be uh, short the French CAC in this zone. So again, it's a zone that we look at for potential reversal. Okay, right. Uh, in terms of the French CAC now, let's bring up the CAC itself. 10-minute chart, again, you retested those lows at that double bottom region. So again, as a cause for concern. We have an unfill gap above, uh, again, remain open to that. So any potential BOJ intervention, etc., then that gap is certainly looking to close. Uh, this zone here at the uh, 3,900, solid, solid support level, support zone. Okay, and that's certainly looking to potentially hold. What 60 minute chart, lower lows, lower highs. So again, the. Uh, the bears certainly is remaining uh, firm control, no real change there, but you do have a falling expanding wedge pattern, so bear that in mind. As we all know, that certainly is a potential bullish pattern, a reversal pattern. So the daily chart, lower channel support, so certainly coming into the equation. Now let's have a look at the DAX. German DAX again, certainly languishing at the lows, a real concern in terms of the German DAX. It did attempt its uh, reversal, but it certainly failed miserably. The 60 minute chart again expanding uh, wedge falling wedge is certainly a, a potential reversal sign okay so indicating exhaustion on the sell side daily chart again you are in that lower channel support and the weekly chart certainly has a support zone that's quite important okay and looking to potentially bounce from here FTSE 100 chart I've already explained it certainly is below that key support zone, so certainly vulnerable here, very vulnerable, and obviously is uh, subservient to the price of oil. And given the fact that these oil majors are all into trouble, given the fact that oil prices continue to make new lows, it certainly isn't going to get well or better anytime soon. So the daily chart certainly is into uh, an immense problem. 60-minute chart at the moment, again, like I said, you're making lower lows, lower highs, you're respecting previous resistance equals support so everything technically is going correct okay uh, nothing is untoward here and everything is running according to technicals at present so lower lows lower highs until we can make a potential bottom in oil it certainly is going to be unlikely that the FTSE will reverse as well okay and obviously China plays a big part in that as well especially with the Nikkei I mean the Nikkei really is um, under the cosh so to speak although we have closed this gap here so we certainly have cap fill support on the Nikkei, so certainly take that into consideration. But again, it's all about POJ, uh, if the BOJ intervenes, etc., etc. So certainly something uh, that's open to debate. And again, you're at the mercy of central banks. So it's not exactly a good position to be in from my perspective, but that is what it is, and we have to uh, uh, continue as traders, okay? Now, let me just... I don't have the Hang Seng charts, it's a shame. Um... Should I bring up the Hang Seng chart? Let's bring up the Hang Seng chart. Let's see exactly where that. I mean, this should be a uh, an insight into how China will react overnight. You see, so hold on a second. Hang Seng, ordinary. There we go. What the Hang Seng index ETF? Hang Seng ordinary. Uh oh, not not working. Not working. Let me just go over to the Asian indices quickly. Okay, so we have the LIBOR, DJ Shenzhen. Ah, oh, here we go. EWH, that's the one. Okay, so EWH at the moment. Hmm, we're into that potential support zone there. Okay, not really showing me anything at the moment. Uh -huh. 
30 years under immense strain. Also, Australian indices as well under immense strain as well. So, you do have potential support for the Australian index as well. That certainly is something. I mean, again, you got the 200 MA on the uh, on the Shanghai index as well on the weekly chart. So, again, all potential support zones. So, that's something that we're going to be watching very carefully. Okay, that's a market wrap, folks. Conclusion market severely, severely oversold. And uh, the market is vulnerable to a short squeeze, and the short squeeze catalyst is the BOJ. So I certainly would not stand in front of the BOJ. That really is a conclusion. Watch out for the inverted head and shoulders on the uh, USDJPY. Watch out for the HNS for formation on the EURUSD. And that basically means, okay, basically means that you are going to get intervention, and the intervention will trigger a massive short covering rally in equities. That's a summation. So from my perspective, I will be in the bull camp. Although I have been hurt in the last 24 hours being in the bull camp because I've been stopped out numerous times, but still managed to uh, muster 150 points a week. Nevertheless, I personally will be in the bull camp and expecting BOJ intervention. The lesson that I've learned over the last few years trading is don't fight central banks. And I will adhere to that strategy, philosophy and thought process. Be sure to visit CFDs.com for your trading needs. Goodbye now.